So I wanted to give my thoughts on how weird I think transphobia and some of these transphobes are. Uh, this is entirely separate from like issues on trans rights, which are extremely important, but not quite the focus of this video. I want to focus more on the strange logic of trans. Uh, this is mostly spurred on by a lot of the J.K. Rowling discourse that has um, sort of been brought up again. Um, so what kind of confounds me a little bit is that J.K. Rowling used to be like a massive feminist icon, all about women's rights, reproductive rights, even gay rights a little bit. Um, and now that she outed herself as a transphobe, as basically a piece of shit, she she's aligned herself with extreme far-right people, and that kind of confuses me, because it seems like she took all of her other views, fairly liberal views, disregarded it all, threw, it, threw them all out, just for her transphobia. So I guess my question would be, is why die on this hill? What's the purpose of it? So a lot of transphobes, uh, and rolling herself, will not necessarily deny gender dysphoria, right? But they'll say that, like, that, that a, a lot of trans folks will justify their transphobia by cloaking it as women's rights. They'll say things like trans, trans women are, like, men invading women's spaces and that these trans women are only doing so to, to try to assault women or to, 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 to potentially be in women's spaces. So this isn't found in the data in any way, shape, or form. But again, this isn't quite about the data, although the data does support me. Um, but we can even see this in like basic anecdotal, anecdotal experiences with, with trans people. Most of the trans people I've ever met in my life have been very socially conscientious people, very nice people. And, they, and they're not trying to invade women's spaces, they, they are women, well, the, the trans women are women, and they want to live authentically as a woman, because they are one, right? So, it, if these transphobes ever met a trans person, more likely than not, like, You'll see that they're not, they, and I know I'm generalizing to like a, a pretty big group of people, but like, they're just not like that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So generalizing the trans women as these like evil people is disingenuous at best and hateful at worst. And I'm honestly leaning more, more towards the hateful end of things. No, of course. A, tr a transphobic person would would like pull up some kind of story on how some some trans person did this egregious thing. Sure, there are examples of people who do bad things. But you can kind of find this in any group of people, anywhere. So, like, unless you can somehow prove that it's at a higher rate, which I promise you you can't, you're not really saying much of anything. Right? If you're like deeply like religious, and I criticize your religion by showing, I don't know, uh, like the sort of sinfulness of Catholic priests, would you take Christianity as a whole as a necessarily bad thing? Maybe some people would. I personally wouldn't because I know that there that that a person's religious beliefs does not necessarily correlate to how much of a good person they are. So the next thing that, that transphobes tend to bring up is like the lived experience of, 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 of a woman. So the idea here is that people born assigned female go through a far different lived experience. Uh, and sometimes trauma in their childhood because women growing up do, 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 do definitely go through some sort of trauma. Um, and that you can't... And they'll say that you can't authentically live as a woman unless you grow up as one. So, sure, cisgender women do experience a different childhood than trans women. I think that's by and large true. But 
this feels like it's talking about women's experiences a little too uniformly. Now, I'm not here that, to sort of deny the, the sort of common experience of women growing up or even living, living their, uh, their, uh, their lives in the present. That makes sense to me. But trans women go through their own shit as well growing up. Because of course they do, right? They, they're, they're, they're born assigned, they're born, they're assigned a male at birth, typically, and they have this dissonance in, in, inside them that, 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 that makes them depressed, that, that makes them dissatisfied, and that makes them not feel like, like they're living well. And I guess my question back would be like, why why can that why can't trans women's experiences also be included in this general concept of a woman's experience? In addition, can you sufficiently define a woman's upbringing um, experience that includes all cisgender women? I don't think you can, because there's far too many people in the category cisgender women and far too many different variables to try to like reconcile into a thing so you would find it quite hard to do that so although so i guess there's like two sides of this coin here right on one hand right absolutely women have shared experiences that that make their lives considerably worse and that these things need to be remedied, right? But on the other hand, you can't, you, you're, you're also trying to take that same experiences and try to wrap it around all women. And I just don't know if you can necessarily do that, right? But I think a good example maybe would be um, like with South Asian folk, right? Like South Asian folk generally have a certain kind of experience, but you know, like like the stereotype of us all being like engineers or doctors, right? I I can find South Asian folk who are not, right? So you can't wrap around that common experience necessarily to every South Asian folk, or an even better example, like all South Asian folks' parents, like like really push them to be a doctor or some kind of engineer. Most of them do, and maybe that should be fixed because that's any because the way they go about it is incredibly toxic, but I mean that's not true of all of them. So you can't say that you can't define the South Asian experience so strongly in such a way where it excludes it, where it, it's going to include some people and then exclude others. It just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem very logical to me, I guess. Uh, I don't know if that was the best example, but I hope you kind of get what I'm trying to say here. The last part I want to talk a little bit about is that a lot of transphobes will just use the argument that, you know, trans women just don't have the right body parts and that excludes them from being a woman. I think this has kind of been talked to death. You know, not all cis women have all the necessary uh, uh, functions that cis women generally have. When we talk about the idea of a woman, it tends to be a broader sort of um, a, 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 a very fuzzy sort of set of, of a, 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 a expectations that you can't necessarily wrap all people into, kind of like what I was talking about with the sort of experiences. I should also note that, you know, a lot of the sexism that does occur is, happens, like, because in that moment that it's happening, a person appears to be something, right? We can see this um, by, like, I, 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 again, I, I don't know if necessarily talking about gender and talking about race necessarily like correlates super well, but like you know, like if you, like like there is such thing as being like, especially in Hispanic community, right? Like being maybe like my skin tone, you would probably 
be clocked as a Hispanic folk person right away. But if you're, say, from Argentina and you have, like, the blonde hair, the blue eyes, you might not necessarily be clocked as Hispanic. Therefore, your experiences will be just broadly different. And in the moment that somebody is sort of not deciding, but that sexism or racism or whatever is about to happen to you, it will happen to you according to what you are perceived as. And trans women are, by and large, are just perceived as women because they are women. Because they... Uh, they, 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 they are women, and they also appear to be women, both, right? Um, so, so, yeah. What was I talking about? I was talking about the like body parts. Yeah, the fact is, is like you. It, it just sort of goes back to the thing, thing where you can't. You can describe things that most women experience, but you cannot describe something that all women experience correctly such that you're encapsulating who you want and you're excluding who you don't because people are complicated or like wide like the like wide ranges of beliefs wide ranges of uh looks what wide, wide, wide ranges of experiences and trying to wrap everything around to 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 it, it feels a little monolithic I guess. now i spend a lot of time talking about women right trans women and stuff specifically and I guess this is my last criticism of these transphobes. They're focusing a lot on trans women who don't quite focus at all on trans men. I think this is kind of sexist on its own. Truthfully. Um, now, now, it's, now the sexism kind of it, 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 it emerges because I think it because, again, from, from what I've observed, at least, it it seems like trans men just seem to be like erased from the conversation entirely. And they exist, their experiences are also there, and they and the rights that they're fighting for are the same rights that trans women are fighting for. They're just just trans men and trans women identify as different genders. So yeah. It so so sort of going back to why are they dying on this hill? And I guess the answer is an answer that we all kind of already know. It's not logical. It's, it's just brain-broken hatred. And that's kind of... And, and, and that answer... Although I guess I could have just started off this video talking about it. So just saying that that's, that's what it is. It still leaves me kind of dissatisfied. Because how could you be so fixated on something that like, isn't really that big of a deal? Just give trans people their rights. Just give trans people what they want. They're not, like, nothing's going to happen. Nothing bad is going to happen. I, I don't know why you would presume anything bad was going to happen. There's, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's, it's, it just strikes me as so strange and so illogical. Uh, I, 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 I know people aren't always perfectly necessarily like logical or anything like that, but why do we behave in such strange, like, like, like not useful ways? Nevertheless, um, this was kind of just a little rant that was kind of going through my head. I kind of wanted to talk out how I thought that all this discourse, well, not the, di well, I, well, I, well, I don't, well, I don't think that the discourse on the left is necessarily bad. I do think that the weird, like, transphobia discourse is really, like, weird and bad and doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, these are just people trying to live their, uh, uh, their lives happily. And I mean, like, we're all trying to do that, man. So just, just, like, let them be. Let them be who they are. Give them the rights that they deserve. It's not gonna, like, nothing, nothing's gonna happen. Like, that's my biggest thing. Nothing's gonna happen. Right? You could say, like, oh, like, they just want attention. Well, then don't, like, then don't, like, give them much more attention. If, if, 
if somebody that you previously knew as a guy comes out as a trans woman and is like, I'd like you to use she, her pronouns, just use she, her pronouns. That's all the attention you need to give it, and that's not a lot of attention. I, I, I guess it sometimes it boggles my mind the mental gymnastics that, that people want to go through just to hate a certain kind of person. There's nothing wrong with sort of being, being born um, assigned a certain gender and then sort of changing it to, to, because you feel different. I, I'm cisgender, but, like, I don't know, I was born, raised as a man, and then one day I looked at myself and I was like, you know, I don't think I'm very manly. So I looked inward, figured out what it meant to be manly, and I'm working towards it right now. Now, I know that, 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 that that's not necessarily the same thing as the trans experience, and I wouldn't necessarily tread on it, but in whatever small way I can... I get it. Um, maybe not completely, and I probably won't ever understand it completely. But in the little ways that I can, I do. Yeah. Anyway, um, this was uh, the video. I, I want to like be like super clear. This wasn't like a huge researchy video. I didn't. I did. I'm. I'm Maybe one of these days I'll do like a massive video essay on on how I feel about something and and like have like a bunch of sources cited and stuff like that. That's not really my intent here. My intent here is just to talk, talk out my feelings. Um, the logic that I've been kind of operating under might not be necessarily perfect. Um, I hope that with the stuff I've said, you sort of take what I intend rather than maybe what I said quite literally. Um, so I don't think I said, said anything necessarily bad. I just want to kind of leave that as a, as a bit of a disclaimer. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all the views. I've been getting a lot more comments and stuff recently. I, I, I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah. And, you know, if I'm wrong about something, uh, you know, feel, feel free to correct me down below. Um, you know, I mean no offense to the uh, trans community. I do mean offense to the transphobic community, but not, but not to the trans community. Y'all are... don't really deserve the hatred that you kind of get. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys later.